112 House Democrats have introduced the Medicare for All Act. Now, this is clearly a great thing, but there are people online complaining. <laughs> now, before I get to details of what's in this bill, including why it's better than the Canadian single-payer system, and also uh, how the American system right now is just completely bonkers, I'll get to many data points on that, I just got to address the the force the vote crowd, which, by the way, I was a part of. I supported the idea of forcing the vote on Medicare for all uh, in order to get uh, support from House Democrats for Nancy Pelosi. They n did not end up using that strategy, but they appeared to not have to, as right now <laughs> the bill is being introduced by 112 co-sponsors. Now, yes, it does not necessarily mean there's going to be a floor vote on Medicare for all, but 112 is over half of the Democratic caucus. So you already see who supports Medicare for all and who doesn't based on the co-sponsor list, which is at least part of the point of forcing the vote because everyone supporting force the vote, anyone rational understood that it was not going to actually pass, that the whole point of it was to try and create a media moment around it while also being able to see who actually supports Medicare for all on the record during a pandemic. So that's why I supported it, and without even needing to force the vote, they are introducing the bill. So if you're out there complaining or trashing the idea of reintroducing the Medicare for All Act, check yourself, because this is clearly a positive uh, move. So before I get to details of what's in this bill, this tweet is really enlightening if you are um, not all that familiar with what happens outside the American borders. Working people who lost health care during COVID-19. U.S. 15 million plus. Every other country, zero. Because other countries don't tie health care to your employer. But in the crazy American system, they do. So COVID-19 disproportionately negatively impacted American health care coverage because of it. Now to get to this uh, bill, which was introduced by Jayapal and Debbie Dingle, who... I gotta say, I don't know all that much about Dingle, but I assumed she was more center, maybe center right. Uh, I was completely wrong. Here she is <laughs> introducing Medicare for all with uh, Pramila Jayapal. So good to see. Now to give you uh, more details on this, Jayapal and Dingle unveiled the landmark legislation at a virtual town hall Wednesday afternoon, where they highlighted the devastating effects of a virus that has killed more than 537,000 people in the U.S. while leaving millions more uninsured due to pandemic-related job loss and underemployment. The bill, backed by a record 112 House co-sponsors, guarantees health care to every U.S. resident as a human right. It provides comprehensive benefits including primary care, vision, dental, prescription drugs, mental health, long-term services and supports, reproductive health care, and other services. It eliminates co-pays and private insurance premiums. Now, first of all, i got to point out again, it's incredible. More than half the Democratic caucus now co-sponsoring the Medicare for All bill. This is a clear improvement over just four years ago. Understand, progress normally doesn't happen this quickly. So while, yes, it's not quick enough because people need health care right now, you have to recognize the incredible nature of how quickly Medicare for All has gained support in Washington. So this number is only going to grow. Now, when we get to the actual coverage, this is where... You see uh, how this Medicare for All Act is better than what the Canadian system currently has. Because in Canada, we don't have vision, dental, prescription, mental health, or long-term health care services. So this Medicare for All Act is truly comprehensive. And this is why when I discuss, you know, often when I discuss the Canadian health care system, it's to an American audience, so I'm discussing the benefits of it. But when I discuss it to a Canadian audience... These are the problems with the system, that our system in Canada does not go far enough. We need these things. So you, what I'm trying to say here is that this act should excite you because this is better, more comprehensive than the single payer system in Canada. Now, let's get to some data points here about the current American system. Life expectancy at birth. So right now among G7 countries, the U.S. is the lowest at 78.7%. Then you have Germany, the UK, uh, Canada, France, Italy, Japan, all above 80, with uh, Japan being the high, highest at 84.2. Also here, a study from Harvard in 2009 
uh, found that 45,000 deaths are linked annually to a health care or a lack of health care coverage. Now, I've seen this number range. Yes, 2009 is, you know, more than 10 years ago. So this number may be out of date, but I've seen estimates between 28,000 to 60,000 deaths a year due to a lack of access to health care. And this is a uniquely American problem because Americans lack health care coverage, unlike other universal systems. So this is a number you will never see in other countries. It just doesn't exist because everybody's covered by health care in, in other countries. Another aspect. A new study from academic researchers found that 66.5% of all bankruptcies were tied to medical issues, either because of high costs for care or time out of work. And as an estimated 530,000 families turn to bankruptcy each year because of medical issues and bills, the research found. So this is just an insane number. 530,000 families a year bankrupt over mainly over medical costs. Again, this does not exist in other countries because our healthcare free at the point of use. But in the US, you have this uh, incredible, crazy system that only benefits the wealthiest in the country. Another study here. So this is from the American Cancer Society. Medical costs create hardships for more than half of Americans. 137,000, or sorry, 137 million uh, adults in the US suffered medical financial hardship in 2015 slash 2017. So this is just going off the other numbers I already showed you, but this is more than half of Americans facing financial hardship over medical bills. Again, this does not exist in other countries with universal health care. This one here from uh, Gallup polls. Americans reports of postponing medical care due to cost 2001 to 2019. So the actual question here, within the last 12 months, have you or a member of your family put off any sort of medical treatment because of the cost you would have to pay? If yes, when you put off this medical treatment, was it for a condition or illness that was very serious, somewhat serious, not very serious, or not at all serious? So 33% of Americans put off treatment for any condition because of medical costs, and 25% of Americans put off treatment for a serious condition due to medical costs. Now, what do you think this does to healthcare, uh, healthcare outcomes? What do you think this does to life expectancy? where you are continually putting off health concerns because of the costs associated with seeing the doctor. What ends up happening is that illness, that cancer, whatever it is, ends up getting worse and worse and worse to the point where you then go into the emergency room and often dying because you go too late to seek treatment. Whereas in a universal system where you feel confident about seeing the doctor and not having to go bankrupt over it, you see the doctor early, catch a, a problem early, a, 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 an illness early, and are able to treat it then and there and get rid of it before it becomes anything worse. So this is a major piece of why the American healthcare system is such trash, because Americans don't actually seek treatment until the last minute. Several graphs here. I'll try to, uh, <laughs> I know there's a lot here. I'll try to go through this kind of quickly. The U.S. has higher rates of medical, medication, and lab errors than comparable countries. So you see here the U.S. at the top with 19%. I don't know why this is. I could maybe take a guess and think it has something to do with the fact that the American system, you know, doctors or uh, healthcare providers have to be worried about, you know, insurance. Are you covered? And in, in, in that conversation, as opposed to being completely focused on the actual patient. So this may having their their uh, their um, you know focus all tied up in, in different issues may lead to there being more errors. But again, I don't know. Pure speculation. Just showing you that the American system is not more efficient. That's what uh, this graph clearly shows. Also, after a steady decline in premature death rates, the U.S. has experienced a recent uptick. So again, uh, showing you that the U.S. is an outlier here. Uh, be, uh, by the way, I'll link to all this below the video so you can go through all the data yourself. But you can see when you look at other countries below, not even anywhere close to where the U.S. is. Um, and it's just, it's, it's clear here that the American system is performing worse than other countries for the vast majority of people. This is well, the U.S. ranks last in a measure of health care access and quality, indicating higher rates of amenable mortality than peer countries. So this, again, showing you just, you know, how the U.S., it's all here, <laughs> ranks last in health care access and quality. Not all that surprising considering everything else I just showed you. Last thing here. Despite millions of Americans delaying medical treatment due to the cost, the U.S. still spends the most on health care of any developed nation in the world, while covering fewer people and achieving worse overall health outcomes. 
A 2017 analysis found the U.S. ranks 24th globally in achieving health care health goals set by the United Nations. In 2018, $3.65 trillion was spent on health care in the U.S., and these costs are projected to grow at an annual rate of 5.5% over the next decade. High health care costs are causing Americans to get sicker from delaying, avoiding, or stopping medical treatment. So even though you have worse outcomes, Americans spend a lot more money on health care than other countries with universal systems. I've gone over a lot of this stuff in the past in other videos, um, but it's important to kind of put it all together here on this discussion on Medicare for All and why you should support the Medicare for All Act. So this will require some uh, pressure on politicians to get more on board, to get an actual floor vote, to get it passed, to get it to the Senate, to get Biden to sign it. Very unlikely due to the current climate of or the current makeup of the Democratic Party and frankly, the fact that Joe Biden is president and not Bernie Sanders. Um, so that's going to be the, the major hurdle here. But it's important to have this conversation now, which is why I support a force the vote, have this con conversation on Medicare for all now during a pandemic and get people on the record in terms of who supports it and who doesn't. If you're a congressperson, look through this list. If your congressperson does not support it, call their office. Try and pressure them. I've seen people online discuss how they have pressured their congresspeople to support this Medicare for All Act. It's possible. The thing is, they need to feel the pressure. If they don't feel the pressure, they're not going to bother supporting it. So it, th you're going to see this number grow because more and more congresspeople are going to be put in the spotlight. Why don't you support Medicare for All during a pandemic when, you know, this is the result of the current American system? So pressure works. It works. It may not get you Medicare for All tomorrow, but understand how far the conversation has come in just four years.